All right, so let's boil down what we have studied in the last 10 minutes. We have studied hyperconjugation. We know hyperconjugation is a phenomena in which sigma bonded electron comes out, the slight sigma bonded electronic density comes out and enter into the adjacent p orbital. Now this phenomenon is called hyperconjugation. What is the significance and why all we are studying this? We'll see this uh, uh, gradually. But uh, these are the three important points that you have to keep in mind and you will learn also these are the three conditions that has to be fulfilled for hyperconjugation to operate. Condition number one, the bond has to be weak. weak in weak bonds, electronic density are loose so that they can come out and enter into the adjacent p orbital. And this condition of weakness is fulfilled only by serious bond in organic. We will not use this concept for any other bond. And for that matter, also CD and CT bond. Next condition is the op uh, it will operate only from alpha position, not from beta and forget about from gamma and delta. Because the distance increases, then the electronic transition is not possible from great distances. And the third condition is the bond has to be par parallel or almost parallel. If they are perpendicular, then the extent of hyperconjugation would be zero. Now let's go on to solve some problems and to understand further this hyperconjugation, how ultimately this we are going to use in chemistry. First of all, let's see. This is the intermediate. Suppose this is intermediate is formed in any kind of reaction that will be studying uh, later. Now this intermediate has been formed. Now I have to see, uh, I have to uh, look for the stability of this intermediate. So I have to look for hyperconjugation, let's say. Then uh, to draw the orientation of bond, we'll draw it like this. Remember, plus charge means empty orbital. Plus charge means electron has been taken away from that atom, and uh, so the orbital is empty, not having any electron. So uh, although this seems to be planar, but uh, this is not a planar structure. This carbon is sp3 hybridized, and this is tetrahedral. This is trigonal planar and this orbital is perpendicular to the plane of these three bonds. All right. Now, now as of now, this this angle is 19 degree because the ang the whole angle, the bond angle in tetrahedral is 109 degree. This is 90, so this is 19 degree. So we can consider this to be almost parallel. So hyperconjugation can operate from this bond. Similarly, hyperconjugation from this bond can also operate for the lower lobe. Uh, so if someone asks how many uh, CH bond will participate in hyperconjugation, prima phase it seems to be 2 because this bond seems to be perpendicular to this orbital but uh, let me show how this, uh, let me show the orientation of this molecule. It is something like this. It is something like this uh, or maybe like this. If you see this carbon, this carbon, this carbon is tetrahedral and this is the tetrahedral geometry and uh, if we make, if we make this bond parallel to the bond shown, this is the tetrahedral geometry and this is the empty orbital. The empty orbital will be like this, one of the lobe will be above the, the bond, one of the lobe will be below the bond. So uh, this bond which is shown by uh, black marker will, will, op will uh, operate hyperconjugation to the upper half of the lobe. That means the electronic density from this bond will move into the upper half of the lobe. Similarly, electronic density from this half, this, this the other black marker, will move to the lower half of this lobe. Now, this bond, the one which is shown by blue marker, seems to be perpendicular to uh, this empty orbital. Now, indeed it is perpendicular, but one thing you must remember, when you study stereochemistry, this thing is taught to you and you must be aware of this. At room temperature, the energy is sufficient for bond rotation. Bond rotation always occurs. This is a continual ph phenomena at room temperature. Con continuously, this, this bond rotates. That means bond rotation is permissible around single bond. So this bond will rotate and the blue marker will become, will become almost parallel to the empty orbital. This will rotate and this, this another black marker will become almost parallel to this empty orbital. So when this rotation occurs, one by one each orbital comes to, uh, to uh, comes uh, in this position and become almost parallel to this empty orbital. So each bond have a chance to operate hyperconjugation of phenomena. So uh, the, the bottom line of this discussion is whatever the number of 
hydrogen is there present at the alpha position, all will participate in hyperconjugation because due to bond rotation, each can become parallel or almost parallel to the empty orbital. So this bond seems to be uh, perpendicular, but after bond rotation, this will become almost parallel, and this bond will also participate in hyperconjugation. So altogether, there are three bonds that will operate in hyperconjugation from this carbon. These two hydrogen. There are, are two CH bonds more in this molecule. These two CH bonds. The CH bond which is on the carbon having that empty orbital. Now we know, or even if we don't know, we will know in the next lecture. Uh, in the next lecture we will be seeing hybridization. There we will know that this carbon, the carbon having plus charge is sp2 hybridized. In sp2 hybridized, the geometry is trigonal planar. And in triangle pair geometry, you have three bonds having 120 degree bond angle, 120 degree, and the empty orbital is perpendicular to the plane of those three bonds. So the angle between this empty orbital and the bond is 90 degree. And in the, th the third condition for hyperconjugation to operate, as we have seen, is that the bond and the orbital must be parallel or almost parallel. And here we see that this is perpendicular. So these CH bonds are not going to participate in hyperconjugation. The hyperconjugation will be operating only and only from alpha position, not from beta, not from gamma, not from delta, not from the carbon having the empty orbital, only and only from alpha position. Now let's solve some problems. The problem states like find the number of CH bonds participating in hyperconjugation. I am giving you certain intermediates and you have to give me the number of CH bonds that will participate in hyperconjugation. Now the best thing is to pause the video, get your answers, then play the video and check your answer. Alright, I hope you have done that and uh, let's see the center video. Now uh, I hope you bear in mind those three points that we have seen, those three conditions for hyperconjugation to operate. The number one, uh, hyperconjugation for hyperconjugation, the bond has to be weak and that weak bond is only CS bond. So we have to search CS bonds. Only CS bond will participate in hyperconjugation. The second condition is it will operate only from alpha position. Now that this carbon, this carbon which is having plus charge, the carbon which is adjacent to this carbocation, that is alpha carbon. This carbon is adjacent to, to the carbocation and this carbon is also adjacent to carbocation. So this is alpha carbon as well. These two are beta and this is gamma. So we don't have to look at beta or gamma position, it's only alpha position. The third condition is the bond has to be parallel or almost parallel. Now this empty orbital will be perpendicular to the plane of the board and this will be almost parallel making an angle 19 degree with the vertical axis. So this CS bond, uh, 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 this, this car, the, one thing uh, this, this corner signi uh, signifies carbon. We don't write C here but we understand Okay, at corner we have carbon. Carbon has valency 4. Only two bonds of carbon have been shown here. Uh, th th that means the rest of the two bond, the rest of the two valency is satisfied by hydrogen. Now this is at our discretion. We can show that CH bond or we cannot show, uh, we do not show that CH bond if we don't like. So, um, you, but you have to understand and you have to know this. Wherever the valency of carbon seems to be unfulfilled, it is understood in chemistry that okay, the valency is filled or fulfilled by hydrogen, we need not show that. Similar, uh, uh, likewise here, the valency of carbon shown here is only 2. That means the rest of the two valency is fulfilled by hydrogen. That means even though it has not been shown here, we understand there are two hydrogens here with this carbon. And those two hydrogens, both of them will participate in hyperconjugation. Similarly, 2 here, that they will also participate in hyperconjugation. So altogether, there are four alpha hydrogen that will participate in hyperconjugation in this intermediate. Now you have to learn this. You have to learn to find out the number of CS bond that will participate in hyperconjugation. If you don't learn this, things will not be very easy. Things will not be very smooth for you hereafter. 
Now, if we look here, this plus charge is at this carbon. Now, this carbon is directly bonded to three carbons. This is also alpha carbon, this is also alpha carbon, and this is also alpha carbon. Now, this, this, this stick, which is over the, the cyclohexane, this stick means CS3 group. Either we write CS3 or we just show it like this. It means CS3 group. That means there is a CS3 group here. We need not show this. But this is also an alpha carbon. So altogether we have three alpha carbon. This alpha carbon has three hydrogen. This alpha carbon has two hydrogen because two of the bonds have, or has already been shown. So it, rest of the two will be from hydrogen. This carbon also has two hydrogen. So altogether three and two and two it makes seven. So this intermediate has seven alpha hydrogen. If we look at this intermediate, on the right hand side you have no atom. On the left hand side you have a carbon atom. So this carbon is an alpha carbon. This carbon has two hydrogen. So there are two alpha hydrogen in this intermediate. Now why we are finding this, this is a later issue. But first of all you need to, you have, you need to learn how to find this out. If we look into this intermediate, we have this carbocation bonded from both sides. So uh, this carbon is also alpha carbon, this carbon is also alpha carbon because they are at equal distance to this, this carbocation. This has two alpha hydrogen, this has also has two alpha hydrogen. So altogether this intermediate has four alpha hydrogen. If we look at this, now this is interesting and this you need to know. Although, if, if suppose if I ask you how, how many alpha hydrogens are there? then there is one alpha hydrogen because by definition the carbon which is adjacent to carb carbocation that is alpha carbon and the hydrogen on alpha carbon are called alpha hydrogen so by definition you have one alpha hydrogen but suppose I ask you how many CH bond will participate in hyperconjugation the answer would be zero uh, as most of you uh, must have identified the reason behind this is this carbon is sp2 hybridized and sp2 hybridization uh, has trigonal planar geometry. So if I draw the geometry of this molecule, this will be something like this. The point to be noted, the hydrogen, the CS bond on this alpha carbon is in the plane of the board. If we consider this molecule in the plane of the board, then this CS bond is in the plane of the board. This carbon is also sp2 hybridized. That means this is also trigonal planar. So all these three carbons are in the same plane. And this empty orbital is perpendicular to the plane of the board. So this CH bond and this orbital are perpendicular to each other. That's why there is no hyperconjugated conjugation phenomena from this alpha hydrogen. Because the bond and the orbital are perpendicular to each other. After having studied this, let's see why ha we have studied this. Uh, we studied this because uh, hyperconjugation phenomena will be an important factor to compare the stability of the intermediates. Now, let's uh, suppose I, if, if someone asks me to compare the stability of these two intermediates. Now, both are carbocations. That means in both the molecule, one of the carbon has an empty p orbital. Now, you see, uh, if a neutral species are always are always more stable. Now, these carbocations. If you have to look for their stability, you have to look to what extent this plus charge is mitigated in the molecule. That means to what extent the deficiency of electron is being fulfilled. If we have hyperconjugation from 4 alpha hydrogen as we have calculated, that means the electronic density from 4 CS bond will be going into the empty orbital. Here, the electronic density from 7 CS bond will be going into the empty orbital. That means this empty orbital will be actually less empty than this empty orbital because you will have the fulfillment from more number of CS bond. So the charge here will be mitigated more in, the, in this molecule. That means the electronic deficiency of the carbon is less in this molecule because electronic fulfillment is from more number of CS bond. As you have calculated here, it is seven alpha hydrogen participating in hyperconjugation. Here you have four. That means this is more stable than this. That's that's the purpose of learning this. That means after uh, after a few lectures, when we will be starting with reactions, and then when we will counter intermediates, and then we'll, when we have to find out their stability, 
we will use this concept, we will use this phenomenon of hyperconjugation and then we will see that the one in which no hyperconjugation is operating, that is more stable.